I greet you in the name of Christ. I greet you in the name of your Lord, your Savior, your brother. I greet you that you may know that you have been invited to a moment of closer walk with Jesus. From your page, respond, Christ himself bore our sins on his body and on his tree. Pray with me. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we who glory in this death for our salvation may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Our song tonight is We Sang Our Glad Hosannas.
I shall read to you events that took place on a day 2,000 years ago. The events took place beginning at about 9 o'clock in the morning, concluding around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. All had to be done before the Sabbath began. Surely we don't want mess like this taking place on a Sabbath. The players are, as I read, number one, we have an, an agent of the Roman Empire that just wants to coast through on his job and please don't bring me any problems. We have agents of the Jewish community that want a problem out of the way, whatever it may cost. We have people that have been following Jesus and just a few days before waving palm branches and claiming him to be a king. We have a man being held who is a, a rebellion against the Roman Empire, a known rebellious person against the empire. And we also have a human being born to a virgin, God incarnate, willing to be vulnerable as a baby, willing to grow up and get splinters in his hands as a carpenter, willing to grow up and to be doubted, willing to be crucified. Let us not forget that all of this was done for you and it was done for me. The candles will be extinguished as a symbol of the light of the world departing. After Jesus had spoken these words at the Last Supper, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Judas often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed them, was standing with him. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. He asked them again, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, cut off his right ear. The name of that slave was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus, and they bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon, Simon Peter, and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. 
But Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was at the guard of the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves in the place had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face. Is that how you answered the high priest? <clears throat> Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas set him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your own law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fill, fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the type of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this of your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And so Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. <clears throat> Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against this man. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit.
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing you, him out to you to let you find that I have no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters and again asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying him the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others on either side with Jesus between. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews <coughs> read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. <coughs> then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write King of the Jews, but this man said, Said I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, I have written what I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among them. For my clothing they cast lots. And that it was what, that's what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister Mary, wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing behind, behind, beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. 
And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the spirit, and the light was out. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross. During the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnness, so they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that Scripture might be fulfilled, None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture. They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to take away the body of Jesus, to let him take it away. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in that garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of Passover, the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus there. Let us pray. Our Lord, as you lay in that tomb, for us it is this evening and tomorrow and tomorrow night, and we go about our business we go about our business driving cars, working, making dinner, consuming dinner. We go about our business watching television. We go about our business in all the things that we do. And you lay in the grave. Lord, you lay in the grave with the fullness of sin cast upon you. But we know, Lord... We know and in our hearts as we go through tonight and tomorrow and the next night that upon that cross, the victory was won. We know that we have escaped prison. We know that we have escaped prison purely as your gift, your gift. Lord, prepare us. Tonight and tomorrow and tomorrow night, prepare us, though we go about our day doing all the usual things, make our heart unusual, refresh it, renew it, create in it a newness, that on Sunday morning, when we arise and we shower and we clothe, and we drive, and we greet the sunshine, that we know in our hearts and our minds that we greet much, much more than all of that, that we greet you, our Savior, and not only our Savior, our Lord, and not only our Lord, but our brother. Amen. As we sing, you're invited to pray at the altar or at the cross, whichever you'd like. <coughs>
that even as Jesus knew what was to come even as Jesus knew what the plan was even as Jesus surrendered even as Jesus was on the cross the candles, the light were very reluctant to go out even at that what wondrous love indeed is this join me in the Lord's prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to depart in silence, but also 
you're invited to be brothers and sisters together in that leaving.